Hello everyone, my name is Abayomi. Today we'll be looking at my workflow. I have an application built with TypeScript, MySQL as database, and Prisma as the ORM. We'll go through each file and the folder structure one by one, trying to explain in the most simplest manner. Let's start from the art of the project. We have the package.json. This is where we install the dependencies. So in my dev dependencies, we are because I'm using TypeScript. Of course, you have the types, the type definition there. We have the create compression course express. So the course is just to remove the course error. Express as a Node.js framework. This web token. Then the node node mount will start a server for the core dependencies. We have the Prisma client. This is the ORM that we are using on top of our MySQL database. Then we have Morgan. We have AMQP Leap for, for queuing. This is a message broker for Node.js, Axios for external API calls, Bcrypt for hashing, Cladonary for image, for storing image on a, on a cloud. In this uh, case, for this, we can use S3 buckets compression, cause, and so on and so forth. Then we have our script here. So I have different script for running, just for testing. So I have my dev, using node mon, I have my PM2, uh, then I have my normal start using node. Then the node is referencing this build folder. Build folder is in here. So when we compile our TypeScript, because we cannot serve TypeScript on the server, we so, because I want to run the index.js, not the uh, ts, so we can have this script here. So npm start, use node to start this build folder, then go into the index.js, this guy. Then we can have something logged to our console. And again, you want to separate your concerns very well. You want to separate your source folder from your logs, from your build. And in your git ignore, you want to ignore um, the logs, the build, and some other files. So let's go into the uh, source folder. Like I said earlier, we want to separate all our concerns very well. So if I go into my index.cs, we have our express, the Morgan here set up. I'm using HTTP2 provides an implementation of this protocol can be accessed using blah 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 then calls for our course origin resource sharing compression middleware so for the compression middleware it's basically compress our response body so it makes our server run faster then uh then we have the express.json url then we have the express.json then url encoded and so on this is my home page because there is no request here. I'm just sending a response body here. I'm using this underscore. Then we are sending something back to the client. And on this ping on line 78, I am pinging just to check if this if the server is on. So I'm using node cron. If I go into the implementation, I'm saying uh, I have here that schedule if your node environment variable coming from your emv file equals to production then at every two, 12 minutes interval fire this ping so we are using axios to only get request we are passing this parameter called url which is just simply soda here then and if there is any error i am firing an emitter server down ping then if i navigate to my emitter under this event on listener this is that server down so once the server is down i'm sending an email to myself just to let find that the server is down so back to our index.ts then we are declaring our prisma client so here we have the prisma client this is the whole that we are using on our uh, MySQL database, a TypeScript database client for TypeScript and Node.js, as simple as that. Then we are connecting, then I'm logging it to the database. In this case, you can use 
console.log or you can use your logger. In my case, I have I have Winston here. So I have my error middleware. So if I navigate into my error middleware, it's taking the HTTP exception, the request response function, and so on. Let me remove this next function since we aren't using it. Then we have our ports. Take our port from our EMV and using this double pipe, if the port is not present, default to 899. Then we are making sure that our port is of type number. Then here we are creating this HTTP to server using the private key and certificates. Then we are putting this fallback in case the HTTP2 is not available fallback to this HTTP1. And then we are shutting down gracefully. Then we listen to our server on this port ports coming from line 92. Server is running. So we're using our log guy. Log guy is coming from Western. Let's go into our Western. So we have our import here, Western. Then we are console logging. Then every file is going to this logs. Every error logs is going to logs folder for slash the error.log file, which is here. So if you have any any logs error here, it's coming, it's going to this file. And for the combined logs, it's coming here. Logs are essentially uh, useful for monitoring our system. Yeah, I think we are done with um the index.ts. Now the next thing is to look deeply into our folder structure. We have the response here, the route, the schema, services, types, utils, and so on. So let's go into them one after the other. The utils uh, basically holds all our upper functions like the logger, the motor. This is my motor.ts for image upload. So uh, my OTP compose, this is where I'm composing my, generating my OTP. So digits should be from zero to nine OTPs. Then we are running this for loop, or you can use package. I'm, I'm trying to limit the number of package that I'm using in my, on my app. So we can generate const unique ID using mandate random and so on. The logger like I explained coming from Wisting, JWT handler from JSON Web Token. So we can generate our token here, verify our token. Then if you want to use refresh token, this is where we can generate our refresh token. Then uh, we've gone through the pink. We have event listener so just for our fire and forget so that we don't keep the user waiting for long so we for sending the otp after probably after registration you want to emit it in the background then we have for forgot password for server dumping and so on and so forth then for my error handler then for email sender using node miller then i'm sending this email using this the uh, credentials are coming from the environment variable. We have the host, the ports, the email, password, and so on. Then we are concatenating the name here. So this, so this will appear on your email like um, coming from so, so so company. It will hide this until you click on it in your email. And then we have a cloudinary config. So if you have a cloudinary account, you want to put your credentials here, your cloud name, API key, and API secret key, and so on. And also in the utils, I have my templates here. So these are my templates if they're just, yeah, basically HTML codes with a string interpolation, we can pass in our high name here. So the name is coming in as a parameter. So it will take it when we are sending email to our users on sign up. So this is for forward password. Sorry, this is for the sign up. Now let's go into uh, types. If you are very familiar with with type TypeScript, you want to declare this global so that you can make this user available in your code. It's just a thing with uh, TypeScript. Unlike in uh, Node.js, you don't have to declare uh, declare this 
global but this is uh, express.d.ts where you make the user available globally then let's go into our service this is our services so uh we i separated my business logic away from my data access layer so this will help us to further decouple our hub so just in case you want to switch from using probably mysql to something like mongodb you don't have to change it on your controller layer so you have to just change it on your data access layer here so we have your user service you can have your picture service which is service and so on so forth then the schema this is where we have our zod here so zod is just a validation package uh, especially for TypeScript, we want to say, okay, before for the request body that are coming into our application, we want to do some, some filtering. So like uh, our name, the minimum character must be three, the email uh, must be trans transformed to a lowercase, password must be, uh, has a minimum character of six and so on and so forth. The role must be this and that. As well as uh, for the login schema, we want to have the email must be lowercase, password must be at least minimum of six characters and so on i have the validator for every controller here then moving on we i think we should go into the controller first before the routes so into the controller this is where the actual business logic happen and the aim is to make this this file as lean as possible you want to make it as very compact you don't want to have too much logic here that's why we are abstracting our data asset layer into another folder and files then we want to use the validator coming from the schema here so we are validating our request body for that is peculiar to this register um re register controller so we are saying if i hold my command and go here we are saying name must be the email must be the password address picture and so on and so forth then we using our user service here this is coming from our data access layer then we are throwing our then we're throwing this bad request exception so you want to so my bad request exception is coming from the exception folder we want to create a class for it for each exception so that we can uh reuse our exception class or classes so I have for bad request forbidding, which is 403. We have for bad request, which is 400. We have for internal exception, which is 500. Not found, which is 404. We have for unauthorized, which is 401. You can extend it or expand it to, to capture 406 and so on and so forth. HTTP, in this root.ts, I have my HTTP exception class uh, that's with this constructor, then I, have my error code declare so just in case i don't want to expose some some of the error code to my client i can internalize this error code like what to be not found maybe 1000 blah 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 so you can revamp this to suit your needs i know so moving on let's move to uh i have my route here so for the route here, let's start with this auth.ts so we have so we are bringing in the controller so from so the flow is from the data access service to the controller then down to the routes and in the route i i have this index.ts holding collection of routes so this, this is peculiar to the auth and this is peculiar to the inspection and so on and so forth so let's go back to the auth.ts we have auth route.post we have register then we can upload this is for uploading uh this is for signing up this upload is coming from the motor in our auth.ts we have this auth controllers then we have a router from express our error handler then the upload method is coming from motor then the auth middleware is coming from our from our middleware auth authentication middleware we'll get it very soon then in, we have auth routes coming from this guy dot post as a verb the action then this is the endpoint then we're saying upload a single image then error handler what this guy does basically is to avoid uh repeating the try catch in every of our controller 
we can wrap this thing this is like a higher order function so we have a wrapper so i'm wrapping each method wrapping each method so we don't have to have a try catch on every level or on every layer so this what it does is we get the register coming from from our odd controller this guy is coming from our odd controller then we wrap it inside this error handler yeah so we can go into our response so you want to write a response class or a response method function for sending a 200 okay response to our clients so you want a formatted response here so let me just show you in the controller so if everything goes well you want to say return social response the response is this it's uh not at the moment but if you want to pass in okay this is for verify okay excuse me this is for the uh, for the register we all want to have return success response the response then the user this is the data and the message so this guy holds 200 by default so you are passing the true so that's true message is coming from this parameter then data also it's coming as any so we have the admin middleware and we have the auth middleware for the admin middleware for the auth middleware you let me space this guy out you want to take uh check if the token is there if there's no token you want to jump into your next function then you want to split a token take the the second index which is your index one you know if uh, we are working with zero index base zero or one so it's going to be bearer token right so we're taking the token they're leaving the bearer they're going to verify the token coming from this guy then against the uh, gwt then we want to fetch the user using the prisma client prisma client dot user so this user is coming from this prisma client the moment i do my migration this is my model user model so it's coming from this dude here so user is getting it from this prisma then find first or you can use you find unique or find many so we are using a where clause then if user is not present you want to return back unauthorized and the error code is coming from this guy if i command enter it's coming from 41 then if not we are creating a new object called user which is appended to this global using where are you global this type yes this user here is appended here then if everything goes well next into the next function if not true or not rise then lastly you want to check our uh, uh, schema.prisma we have a schema.prisma this is where you the moment you run uh this so the, the moment you run this command mpx prisma in it is going to generate your your data source db provider postgres you might want to change it to your db driver in my case i'm using my my scroll then it will propagate this database url inside your environment variable i cannot show you right right now then uh, you can you, you want to change it to your actual database url yes that is it for today let me know if you want me to create this application or something similar to this from scratch let me know in the comment section below thank you for watching